Hi everyone and welcome back to my Coffee with Courtney. Today I'm joined by the gorgeous Kate Robbins. Ooh, how's the two-show day treating you? Well, I've had my nice little sleep. Lovely. You lot, you all go to the gym. I like a kick. <laughs> and they feel wonderfully refreshed. Yes, yeah, so I feel nice and refreshed now. Let's begin. What is your most favourite part of the show? The most favourite part of the show is when I stand at the side at the end and watch you lot in white doing the relaxed routine when I'm not on stage. Oh, really? Mm. To be fair, I always do catch your eye, don't I? I love it <laughs> because it's just so well choreographed and it's not choreography that I probably could do. Um, and I love to watch you lot doing it. Apart from that, what do I like doing that I'm in? Yeah, go on. Um, I love it when the audience um, actually see themselves laughing at me um, when I do the um, scratching of the eyes. Foof. Fanny. Hey, foof. <laughs> do you ever find Just yourself foof. like... Sorry, I said foof. You Just said foof. foof. I said fanny. It's fine. Because the, the character I play is so sort of um, down to earth, let's just say. Yeah. And she comes on, as you know, and she oh, yeah. this and scratches herself, and people just can't believe I'm doing it. And uh, it's not very classy, but there we are, it's funny. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> me after a few vodkas, to be fair. It's fine, it's fine. Right, next one. How much do you enjoy working with Joe and the cast? Oh, Joe, I mean, he's fantastic. Oh. Obviously, I'm going to say that. No, but I'm not just saying that. <laughs> I didn't know, when I first came into this show, I didn't know what Joe McCallum could do with him, apart from being a brilliant singer. All yeah. I knew was he was his cast's voice. Didn't know he was a bit of a comedian. Yeah, she is. He's a natural. He's a natural comic. Yeah, I think I think we're very lucky with this cast that a lot of people have got natural comedic timing. Yeah, and they know how to use yeah. it in a proper way without yeah. being too. And he is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, he has such a laugh. He's, but then he does say things like, "Aren't you coming to the farm with us to hold the little pigs?" And I think, you know, because you all you lot you're in your twenties. That's the sort of thing you like doing on your day off. <laughs> no, I'm not going to a farm to hold little pigs. I think you'd have loved it. development of the part of Consuela? Um, I had a bit, quite a bit, because right. it was written, um, Consuela was written, I think originally as a man. Right, okay. And it got changed to a woman, and I just said to Michael Ginger, the brilliant writer of the show, I just said, if I can do my own thing a little bit with Consuela, like my own impressions, yeah, of course. and um, make her a little bit odd, a bit weird, yeah. and he just said, yeah. Go with it, and so he did let me put a few of my own little lines in, just a few. Yeah, and I, I guess it makes it more natural for you as well, because with such a fun, mm. flamboyant part, mm. you also want to feel very comfortable and very natural doing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I've made her a bit mysterious because at the end she says, "When I was a little boy," and then you do things. You know, <laughs> she used to be a boy. <laughs> just want to be inclusive, and uh, um, yeah, it takes everyone by surprise. And um, he let me, he let me do my own thing to a certain extent. So I, I think I would say I had about 30%. Staying with the character, mm -hmm. are you changing things up with Consuela as the development happens with the character? Are you finding new things? No. Are you... No, I think it's important to stick with what you've got, really. Lovely. Because otherwise you start turning her into too many things. Yeah, of course. No, she's what she is. She's, um, she, I base her on, I think this is probably going to be one of your questions, but I base her on um, some of the grumpy... Um, Spanish women Stunning. that I knew in the in the town where we used to have our holiday home. Okay. <laughs> and the kids used to say, "Mummy, mummy, can we go and get some naranja? You know, oranges from the nice lady over there." Yeah. Like, no naranja para niños. No so oranges. You, you've for the met Consuela. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've Although seen I hope before. Consuela, I hope I've made her quite nice. I mean, it was just a funny, but particularly one woman, she didn't like giving free fruit to the children or anything like that. So it just made me laugh because you think. These benevolent women sitting there, you know, the little shawls on. Yeah, they're going to be lovely. She yeah. like, really horrible. Oh, oh God. happy holidays. Yeah, yeah. happy holidays. <laughs> How do you compare performing in musicals now to your earlier career? Oh, gosh. Totally. I mean, I was doing voiceovers mostly um, and doing cabaret shows with my own act. Yeah. Which is me playing the piano and singing and doing comedy. But this is completely, completely different. Just as enjoyable? More enjoyable. I love it. I love being with you lot. I love it. it. keeps me young. You see, I think it's easy when you're not in a relationship. I haven't got a fella or a partner. 
<laughs> and I think that um, it's easier being on tour when you're single. Right. I think that, you know, you just you get up, you look forward to the show, you do the show, you go and have a drink, you go to bed. It's, you don't have to think about, oh, getting home all the time. And I guess being in a different city as well, like, especially if it's a city you haven't really spent much time in or never been before, you want to explore that a little bit. And yeah, it's as, nice. as well as being away from the theatre, you want to yeah, yeah, see I the mean, area that you're in. Yeah, well, we don't do too much of that. But yes, I go to art galleries and stuff like that. Oh, I need to go um, to one of them. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I don't go see the little pigs in the farm. <laughs> Right. Um, do you draw on anything from your earlier career to help with your character now? Yes. Just impressions. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think voices. I think the fact that I've given Consuelo this weird voice, you know, she's got like this. Yeah. Or this sort of, like, I don't know where it comes from. And speaking of impressions, have you ever done an impression of someone in front of them? Yes, in I person? have. And it doesn't really work. Right. Because if I was to do you, um, how your voice sounds to you isn't how your voice sounds to everyone else. So you hear your voice coming out of your head box, which is your head, right? That serves as a different speaker to how I hear your voice. Right. So if I was to do you, which I, I'm not going to attempt, <laughs> um, you'd just go, oh, no, it's not quite like me, because people right. don't recognise their own voices. Don't you hear something like, you only hear like, what is it, is it 80% or something? You hear, but you hear it very fuzzy, because it's coming out of your head, your voice sounds softer. So really, you do. So I like from hell talking like this and all that. Proper found and me, really. No one recognises their own impressions, so it's not worth doing it for me. Oh, People really? always say to me, go on, do me. And then they oh. do it, you do them, and they look mortified, so I would not recommend it. Do you ever find it like a little bit of pressure? Or are you like, do you know what? I'm, 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 well, I'm I think Emily, my daughter Emily's taken over a little bit doing that now, so right. I, I can lay off doing that. <laughs> we always say to her, go on, do so and so, do so and so. That she's now taken the, yeah. the rim. Right. Um, are you tempted to break into different characters and impressions at a dinner party? No, not really. Never. Only if asked. I think that if you go to a dinner party, it'd be quite rude to suddenly start doing. I mean, people do tend to say to you, Oh, did you do the Queen in Spitting Image? Go on, do it. Say, Queen, I'm saying, Oh, yes, I want to be the Queen. And you make people laugh by doing it. But I yeah. mean, if you just suddenly offer it up, it looks like you're showing off. And you look a bit weird. How did you manage? How do you manage? Manish. 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 Your work. No, Manish. How do you manage all the fabulous costume changes in the show? Um, with four people standing there. <laughs> I don't know, just stand there. And, and they kind on. of whip everything off yeah. and get it on. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. And the first few shows, I didn't have that much help. Right. And when, when I was late for a few entrances with the wrong costume on, I think somebody had a word with management and went, can we sort out the <laughs> Can we sort out Kate's dresses, please? Because she's not doing very well. Seven changes, you know. Seven. Mm. So that's like mo that's the most out of anyone in the show that yeah, you have is, the most yeah. costume yeah. changes. And my part is supposed to be like a bit like a panto dame in that she comes on and surprises everybody with her outfits. Yeah, you know. exactly. So, yeah. And it does every night. I mean, I hear the audiences when you walk yeah, out and they, do they that. absolutely love it. Yeah. If the show goes into the West End, would you want to be a part of it? Absolutely. I mean, how could you say? No, I do you want to play my role? <laughs> I think it'd be a nice because you've originated the part as do well. Do you think it's a West End show? Yeah. Hmm. I think a small run. Maybe. I think a small run. Yeah. I think because we've been compared to also Mamma Mia. Yeah, it is a bit of a Mamma Mia feel in that everybody knows the songs already. Um, it's just the story they don't know, so they they feel at home with the music, but they're surprised by the story. So that's what Mamma Mia did as well. Exactly. And in that respect. It is the new Mamma Mia. It is. I think with how everyone is feeling at the moment, there's nothing wrong with a bit of lightheartedness put no. out there. Oh, everyone's so fed up with the Brexit stuff. I think um, we we should be put on the national health for people because we cheer people up and we we are good for your health. Yeah. You know, people do say to me. I mean, one woman said to me yesterday. I was coming into it. I've all, I already had broken a rib, and I broke it again, laughing so much. Oh, I went, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. It was broken, but no, I broke it again because I was laughing so much in the show, and I went, oh. But I mean, you know, it's a nice thing to be told. It's nice to walk out at the end of the night and see every see everyone so they're smiling. Everybody like it's just it, so they? nice. Yeah. It's so refreshing. Touch to wood. See. Touch wood. We've never we've never had a um, show that hasn't gone down absolutely brilliantly. Yeah. And we always get the standing ovations, as you know. Would you be interested in being part of another musical after Club Tropicana? Oh, definitely, yeah. 
Yeah. Do you have anything in mind what you would maybe like to go into? Well, the only reason I was interested in doing this was because it was a new musical. Right. I wasn't really interested in going into musicals that have already been done. I always said that if I do a musical, it's got to be a new part, and I want to create a yeah. new part. So um, that's that's that. But then having said that, you know, Mama Morton quite like that role in Chicago. Oh my goodness, that'll be so nice. <laughs> What's your favourite impression? Um, I think it was the cream on Spitting Image when I used to say, Come here, Philip. Come to bed. One's feeling rather horny. <laughs> Which means I'll never be a dame and I'll probably be beheaded <laughs> from the tower. But um, yeah, I think it was the cream. Really. Uh, do you know what? Like, I, I used to watch Spitting Image when I was little, so I used to watch it with my mum and dad. And I used to be really scared of masks. I thought you were going to tell me. And I watched Spinning Image, it really helped me, I feel of that. You didn't listen. No, no I didn't listen to you shit myself every time it came up. <laughs> what was your first impression after the read-through? After the read-through, my first impression was um, that Jo McKelvey had natural comedy timing. And I was like, phew. Yeah. So relieved, because that was my fear, was that he wasn't going to be funny. I knew, I knew how talented he was. Yeah. And then when I saw how naturally funny he is, I was absolutely thrilled. Yeah. So I came away from that read through. And everyone, of course, in the cast was so lovely. And I thought, well, this is nice. This is yeah. going to be fun. I think it's nice, especially with touring as well, because you are quite close from day one because you're going sure. around the country together. And we're very lucky to have a cast that is all very supportive. But it's a very happy tour, isn't it? I mean, we're yes. very, um, we all get on well. And I think we don't sit in each other's hair too much no i mean course. i do my own thing I, yes. I always like to go on. and it's healthy to do that yeah. as well but you know i'll still come out for a drink with everybody and um it's just great fun yeah and i just thought after that first week oh this is gonna be good i just thought yeah this is gonna work you just yeah. got that feeling straight away i did, I did actually yeah. that's that's yeah. brilliant and finally what is the most memorable moment of your career so far the most memorable moment of my career or if you've got clip it's you know, like anything. I suppose it has to be appearing that I've got to number two in the charts. That the because in those days you had to sell physical records. Right. And it was you know I'd sold half a million. That's incredible. And I was like quite happy about. How that. did you feel? Was it kind I was of in like mum's house? Were you? Yeah. I wasn't going through a great time in my personal life, and I was told I got a phone call because nobody had mobiles. They just got a phone call from your manager. On the landline. Because I've been number 13 the week before. And right. Went, and I said, what number is it this week? And you waited on a Tuesday to hear what number you were. And you just went, number two. I went, oh. We never got to number one. So close. Mm. So close. Mm. Can we bring it back? Mm. Can we put it to number one? I suppose that was a memorable moment. Also, doing Eurovision was very memorable for me. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, the live in front of 500 million people when you're 20 years old is quite memorable. I've, I've had lots of memorable things. Doing live, I love live telly. I used to do a live program with Harry Enfield called Saturday Live, and I did um, impressions on that. I did uh, Priscilla, Priscilla with the Scousers. So blind date. You know who played the Scousers? Eh, eh, oh, cam yeah, down, yeah. Cam down. So we did a black cam down sketch, and that was live. That went very well. I love live. I think that's what it, why I love theatre, isn't it? Really yeah, nice. I like live. That's so true. And yeah. with these, with the live television, did you also have an audience as well? Oh yeah. So yeah. you got the feedback yeah. from it. Yeah, I mean, when we did Dinner Ladies with Victoria Wood, um, we always did it in front of an audience. That's like, so it was like being in a theatre. That's nice. That's where you find yourself as a natural. Yeah, I think it is. I love it. That's what it is. I need an audience. I've done films. I've done the uh, Sex Lives of the Potato Men by right. Kenzie Crook and um, Johnny Vegas, which wasn't received very well, but it did sell a lot of uh, films. Right. And, uh, <laughs> I played um, yeah a horrible woman in that, um, and then I did I did um, a film with uh, James Franco when he was just starting out, and uh, he was nice, and that was called Flyboys. That was a World War One film. Right. So I do like filming. Yeah. And I've done many many TV dramas and things like that, um, but yeah, I, I, honestly, I just love working. I don't want to sit at home. I mean, if I do sit at home, I'm always painting or you know I like painting. I'm always doing something creative. I don't. Or yeah, reading exactly. a book, or oh, I love watching telly though. Oh. Now, I'll tell you what's really good daytime television. Victoria Darvish is very good in right. current affairs. I always watch Lorraine between 8 30 mm. and 9 30. Love watching that's Lorraine. got all the showbiz in it. And she's a fantastic interviewer. No, I do like watching TV, and I like. I think it's a great way to relax and um, yeah, unwind. But I love everything. working. Yeah, there's nothing. Bring it on. There's nothing better. Mm. More and more work, please. Yeah. See, she actually brought me a tea. I do what I promise. <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll see you in a minute. I'll, I'll see you in about half an hour. Yeah, see you then. Getting into wigs. Thank you, my lovely. Cheers. Thanks, guys. And if you like what you see, please subscribe below. Have you looked for Joe Franco? Is he really oh, pretty yeah. in person? Don't make it really <laughs>